you still don't really know what you want to do. And I think that that sort of remains the same for a lot of people until they get to 30 or something, like until they really get to know themselves. I think it just changes. Yeah. Like people, yeah. people change. Like, okay, so I remember this one guy told me uh, when I was in high school, like a really famous CEO, and he said, he said people change, but not that much. You ain't messing with the flow, you ain't messing with my vision Messing with the money, you ain't messing with decisions Yeah, you messing with the team, then you messing with the squad Mess with one of us, you be messing with them all Yeah, yeah, yeah Staying up late, making Hey everyone, this is Gary and Amir And today I want to welcome you to episode 2 of Ask Synergy TV um, So I hope you enjoyed uh, the first episode uh, so, so if you haven't, um, you know I guess like watch it. So today, um, so from, from now onwards, the videos will be purely on questions itself. And then, so I think we're going to be separating the vlogs from our we, we, videos. We'll be creating playlists. So uh, we'll have a playlist for the questions. Yeah, yeah. Ask the Niji TV. And we'll have other, other playlists for, you know, you know doing, doing math questions or maybe physics, um, chemistry, yeah. stuff like that. Anyways, let's get on to the first question. Um, so Amir, do you want to ask the first question? Yeah, so the question today is from Sa, and this is a kind of a really important question. It's a question that probably is the most asked question I've heard from Year 10 and Year 11 students. And the question is, what subjects should I choose for the HSC and why? Okay, so in terms of this question, I think that at the end of the day, this is a decision-making process. So what I mean by that is, you should actually play by your strengths. And, and know your, if you don't know your strengths, go find out. But you should go play by your strengths and know what your weaknesses are. Ultimately, I think it comes down to three things. Uh, so firstly, it's talent. Uh, number two, it's scaling. And number three is what, what do you want to do in university and what uni you actually want to go to? In terms of talent, I think if, if you believe that you have good analytical, analytical ability, I guess a good uh, indicator of that would actually be your mathematical level. Um, so particularly if you're planning to choose three in math, and, or, or even if you're doing two in the math and you're actually really good at it and you can't be bothered doing three in it, then I think you should actually go about choosing physics and chemistry, uh, the science subjects and even economics to some extent. But the thing is, if you believe that you don't have as good of an analytical ability, um, you know, with math and all these kind of things, then I, sh I think, you know, definitely go with the humanities, you know, do legal studies, business studies, you know, whichever one that you feel like um, you're most comfortable with at the end of the day. Yeah. I just wanted to add that um, if you're planning on doing two unit math, then in your 11, you should do three unit math. You should choose three unit math anyway, and then you know if you find it too hard, then just drop drop three unit in your twelve. That way, because in three unit, doing three unit math in your eleven, a lot of the stuff you learn will actually help you with your two unit skills. So you end up just learning more math in the end. And I think it ends up being more beneficial if you just choose three unit. Just choose three unit. Plan to plan to drop it anyway. Um, and the same thing applies for English as well. So everybody has to do two unit English. You know, if you want to practice some more English, get some more, get your essay skills improved, do three unit English in your 11, and then if you find it too hard, just drop it in your job. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's actually something I did. Um, oh, when, I did when that too, yeah. Oh, yeah. We both so, did that. Yeah, so I actually, so Amir and me, we both did um, three unit English. Um, and, and so I think I had, that I had no intention of doing extension English in year 12, but <laughs> I, I knew I was bad at English, so I was like, okay, I need more practice. Yeah, yeah, so so it's, in extension English, you definitely actually pick up a lot more skills in terms of actually analyzing a variety of texts. Some people actually end up finding 3 a little bit easier as well, uh, just because 3 actually, well, 3 English actually scales a little bit better than, a lot better than 2 English. Um, so you'll find, so a lot of my friends who actually did 3 English, um, they're actually scoring a bad 6 or an E4, but for 2 English, they only got a bad 5. So they take your best two units. So you yeah. have the three. The downside is that you have to memorize, or like you have to understand <laughs> what one more text is. Um, I don't know exactly. Yeah. So talent. Just just what Gary said. You know, figure out what you're good at. If you don't know what you're good at, um, I guess you can base it on math. But maybe maybe look into the syllabus of things. So there are some certain subjects that I feel have a little bit more memorizing than other subjects. So humanities, so legal studies, and all that modern history. There's a lot of memorizing. You know, you got to learn and the history. also essay writing as well. Yeah, essay writing. So if you're good at essays or good at English, then modern, ancient, ancient history, maybe even geography, yeah, geography business yeah. studies. Oh yeah, one, one thing I want to mention is that year 7 to 10 science is not a very good indicator of what year 11 and 12 science will actually look like. I mean, I mean, that depends on how your school actually teaches it. But for year 7 to 10 science, like, the thing is, you realize that there's a lot more memorizing involved. So for HSC subjects, like I would say for physics and chemistry, about 30 to 40 percent of the um, of the subject is actually very math based. Um, the other 20 30 percent um, is very conceptual. So I think it's it's quite it's quite theoretical. But when I say theoretical, it's not actually that difficult. Uh, it's actually quite easy. And the thing is, all you have to do is sort of understand how those sort of concepts work, and you apply it to a certain situation. And then the other 20 20 percent or so is is all based on like 
um, you know, how, how, how does this affect the environment, how does this affect society, and that's a little bit of rote learning, but things is not too bad, it's actually very simple. In year 11 and 12, for any subject, you, you do get a syllabus that you have to follow. And if you can study based on the syllabus, and if you know the content, then minimum for any subject, you should actually be able to end up getting a band 5. Uh, but the thing is, if you do well in terms of your exam technique, then pretty much there's a high potential that you get a band 6 or even a state ranking. To add to that, I drew a little graph of how the sciences kind of rank against memorizing versus understanding. So biology has the most memorizing and, the, and as a result it has the least understanding. By understanding I mean understanding the concepts that are covered in these subjects. Chemistry kind of sits in the middle so it's kind of a mix of understanding and a bit of memorizing and physics, you know, to do well in physics uh, there's not much memorizing but you really need to understand what's going on in the background for you to be able to apply that kind of knowledge in, in different mm, yeah, scenarios. Definitely. So like understanding I guess you could say is like a little bit like your math ability and memorizing is just how, how good you are at rote learning stuff. You would have, yeah. We do know a little bit about the other subjects in terms of like the way you sort of learn uh, or go about learning the subjects. Yeah, gen generally the humanities subject will be sitting up there in, uh, in the biology um, I would say economics will probably be equivalent to chemistry. Um, I remember doing economics in year 11 then. But the thing is like, I would say probably a little bit more uh, memorizing. One more thing before we finish off the talent, I just want to sort of fix up this misconception that a lot of students have. Um, in terms of thinking that physics and chemistry is, is actually hard, but it, it, in reality, um, it's actually quite easy. What's well, e well, easy for us? I mean, okay, let, let, let me sort of explain. <laughs> so, when something's hard, it's all based on relativity, right? It's all relative to your peers, like for, for you guys at the end of the day. A lot of the time, like, your peers will actually be at this level. You're going to be at this particular level. Obviously, if you're at this level, like, no matter if you do, like, you know, humanities subjects or you go back to the science subjects, you're going to be spending the same amount of time studying for both the subjects. Like, let's say you're going to be spending three hours on, on studying legal studies, and, and then you're going to be spending three hours doing chemistry. And the thing is, you're going to learn the exact same amount of things, right, exact same amount of content. The thing is, your friend, you know, might spend three hours studying legal studies and, you know, spending three hours on chemistry as well. But the thing is, you know, he or she uh, might actually find chemistry a little bit harder and, you know, might not, you know, actually take in as much of the content as you might have. When you think about it like that, you want to, if you were to choose between legal studies or chemistry or any humanities versus like the science subject, you should definitely go for the sciences just because the sciences actually scale better. So what I mean by that is like, let's say um, a, a 90 for legal studies and a 90 in chemistry. It's a whole different story for your ATOM. If you were to get 90 in chemistry, you, you would actually end up getting a higher ATOM. Or if you were to do legal studies, you would actually end up getting um, a slightly lower ATAR relative to doing chemistry. And I guess that sort of brings us to the next topic, which is scaling. Uh, hopefully we'll pull up we'll pull up this diagram that shows you that... If I have enough time to do that. If it's not there, then I don't know, like, it will be in the future videos. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's like this that. picture. Do you remember the picture I posted on, on Instagram? But it basically, it shows two, two people, uh, one choosing low scaling subjects, one choosing high scaling subjects. They got basically the exact same mark. And one, one person's ATAR was 90 and the other person's ATAR was 80. So, so it does make a big difference. And so definitely take scaling into consideration. I think we're gonna to have to do another video on, on scaling and alignment. Uh, a lot of people get confused. They think they get a mark in the exam and then it gets scaled and then you get your HSC mark. The HSC mark that you get is your scaled mark. But that's, that process there is actually called alignment. And scaling actually only affects your ATAR. It doesn't affect your marks mm. whatsoever. So uh, we'll do a video on alignment and how scaling works and everything like that. But for now, I just want you to make sure you understand, make sure you take into consideration scaling. The amount of scaling for every subject is publicly available. We'll put on some, we'll put up some graphs at and some, some point as, as well. well. Yeah. And some links, yeah. Put some graphs and some links to show you how different subjects scale. So basically what you'll have is you'll have a percentile at the bottom. Percentile means, you know, how you rank with the rest of the cohort. And then I will put scaled mark um, on the y-axis. And basically, uh, if you look at like something that's really, really high scale, so that's why I scale. Like even if you even if you do horribly poor in, in extension two math, like you don't, you don't even do you do a quarter of the exam, you leave three quarters of it out, you would probably get a rough a scaled mark of somewhere in between eighty and ninety. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think yeah. I think we should do a video on exam strategy later on, like yeah. some study strategy. I mean, like if you, because the thing is, you can actually really look at the scaling. Um, to, to actually really determine how you should go about strategically getting the highest ASAP possible. Um, like, that's, that's, yeah. that's why the Asian five are so popular. I feel like it's kind of cheating the system because you know the scaling the scaling factors are actually chosen by the board of studies arbitrarily. They just be like, okay, this subject's hard. Let's scale it this much. So it's kind of unfair, but you can abuse the system and, and choose high scaling subjects. Hopefully, your talents 
are in high scaling subjects. If you're in very, very younger years, you should look at the scaling numbers and, and try and shift your talents towards the, the high scaling subjects if you're looking to so, get. So like gaining analytical ability, um, logical thinking skills, problem solving skills, like things like, things like that are all very necessary for you to actually doing well in these high scaling subjects. Do we move on to the next one? Yeah, so the third thing is uni. Um, yeah, so university. Uh, so this is also super important when you want to consider like what subjects you want to do. Uh, the reason why is like, like I don't know about you, but like when, when I was in year ten, like I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I think most people. Uh, don't. I but I, I think but I think what you can do is just take a look at the UAC guidebook, which shows you all the courses that are out there. Yeah. And create a short list, maybe a list of ten or, or fifteen, like kind of just general areas you want to go into, mm. or even just cross off areas you don't want yeah, to get into. Yeah. It's like, oh, I definitely don't want to do medicine. You know, I can't stand blood. You cross <laughs> that off, and you go go process of elimination, and kind of short cut down to a couple. A couple of degrees, yeah, like, and if you want more information about a degree, just let us know, and we'll do yeah, yeah. So, on it so, as well. so with, with the um, so the reason why me is telling you to sort of do that is because or recommending to sort of do that is because every single course you do in university has a potential uh, for for bonus marks from your HSC. So I, don't, if, I don't think it's every single, but for most, most, most subjects, um, like subject for a lot of the science, like the uh, the medical subjects, like medicine, I think law, um, optometry, and things like that. Like you don't actually get the bonus points, so you can actually go to you know something website to check that. Yeah, but for so example, we'll put the link on. yeah, yeah. But for example, if you were to do like you know business studies or something, then um, you would actually get uh, bonus points for international studies and arts um, at USW. All the arts. Ones. Yeah, all, all, all the art subjects. Um, if you were to do physics and chemistry and, and the high level of maths, um, you actually do get bonus points for uh, the engineering subjects. I think even like the bachelor of science and things like that. So you should definitely look into that. Um, so that's why like. Yeah, yeah. Up there, and down here, silly. Uh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it, it, it's just like, um, if you want to consider more about your future, then definitely look at, like, look at the potential courses that you might end up doing in university, and then sort of link that up with the subjects that you can actually do in high school, because for most subjects, for like, you know, sub you, you can actually get up to five bonus points, I think, for, in terms of um, subject. I think they've gone up to ten now. Is it? Oh, we'll, we'll check that. We'll check yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, but but in, back in our days, years back, um, it was five bonus points um, for for the subjects. So that was pretty cool. Oh, for the subjects, yeah. Yeah, for the subjects. But I think you get other bonus bonus points for like living in the area and like things like that. But but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully you don't need bonus points to get to. Yeah. So if you, if you don't know what a bonus point is, say say you want to do engineering, the cutoff for engineering is ninety five, but your ATAR was ninety one. But you did physics, chemistry, and math, and then you, you got, got like band five in them, and then you probably get like one or two bonus points for each of them. Yeah, you get one or two bonus points for each one, and they kind of add, they temporarily add into your ATAR just to get into that course. Particular course, yeah. yeah so, so, so actually, university super helpful. Yeah, so actually, getting to university is actually not that difficult. Um, but doing university, that's a hard bit. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed um, a little session on on subject selection. Um, if, there's, if there's anything we left out or want more information on, you can uh, just shoot us out of Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat. Snapchat's down. So, so I'll put, I'll put the, oh, the, the link should be already up. Down um, there? I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's somewhere. <laughs> uh, Facebook, um, Instagram as well. Um, if any of you guys are using Twitter, um, we are going to start using that as well. So you can ask us questions on that. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, but thanks a lot. Like, I mean, I hope you enjoyed um, episode two. Um, and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> below, I think. Below, yeah. And, and, and yeah, so watch out for episode three. So, yeah. Thank you. Take it easy. No, right. That's weird. Thank you. <laughs>